Now, I don't want to get too far ahead of the story, but I, I noticed that you spoke movingly about both Maynard Jackson when he passed mm -hmm. and yeah. Governor John West when sure. he passed. Sure. What, what, what about these two men? Maynard, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Maynard, um, when I ran for office in 1970, I don't know why, but we wanted to have uh, this dinner to raise some money. Mm. I was getting ready to run for the House of Representatives. And we were thinking about a big name. Uh, Maynard at the time, I think, was maybe a vice mayor uh, of Atlanta. And we issued an invitation asking would he come speak. Mm -hmm. And he came. Mm -hmm. uh, came to Charleston, the old Fort Sumter Hotel. We had this big thing down there. Uh, my mother and father all came. It was uh, four or five hundred people. Uh, no black person had ever done anything like this in Charleston before. And the next morning, uh, Manet needed to go to Columbia. And so I drove him to Columbia. I had a little 69 Mustang mm -hmm. uh, without air conditioning. Mm -hmm. We got in that car and, you know, made it got there. He filled up the whole passenger side of the seat and his voice just resonated through that car. And we had a conversation that day, mm -hmm. uh, some of which I have never uh, talked about um, and will only write about. Um, but here's this guy who was bigger than life almost, his voice. It was just, and he, um, I don't know, it was a, a great experience for me. I don't know um, what I would have thought of him had I never taken that ride with him. Mm -hmm. But I just got emotionally attached to men, and I always was. Uh, and so, uh, <coughs> we, when he died, um, it was like a little bit of me died because uh, he spoke that night uh, just about things in general. He didn't know me. Mm -hmm. Got to know me a little bit in that automobile ride, which was an hour and a half, two hours. And we stayed in touch over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, even when he uh, was no longer uh, mayor uh, and out in the business world, we stayed in touch. Um, and it was, uh, uh, it was a loss for me when he died. What about John West. Yeah, Governor West. John West was uh, interesting. Um, you never know why things happen. Uh, and I never knew. I ran for the House in 1970. John West was running for governor. Uh, I met him in 1969. Uh, I'll always remember the day I met him. It was August 16, 1969. Uh, that's the day my second daughter was born. Mm -hmm. uh, John West accepted my invitation to come and uh, speak at the groundbreaking for a self-help housing program that I was doing in Charleston County. And when he got there, uh, he told me after the program, he said, explain to me what you're doing here. And so I explained to him exactly what the concept of the program was and what we were doing. This was out on uh, Adams Runs, uh, South Carolina, Young's Island, outside of Charleston. He said to me, he said, I really like this idea. He said, you know, he says, I'm going to run for governor next year. Mm -hmm. If I get elected, uh, I want you to consider coming and working for me. Well, uh, that next year, he ran, and then I ran for the South Carolina House won the primary. Uh, nobody expected me to win. I, I ran a very populist kind of campaign. I was a, a former school teacher there that uh, students really uh, liked and they, they all got in my, in my campaign. The morning after the primary, uh, all of this comes, let's guess to how my wife gets into some of this. The morning after uh, I had just won, we had this great victory. I went to my bathroom the next morning, and there on my sink was a little note from my wife. And the note read, when you win, brag gently, and when you lose, weep softly. Mm. So that note <coughs> had a tremendous impact on me. By the time I left the house that day, uh, I had toned down mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a little bit. But that fall, uh, in the general election, 
Uh, ours announced the winner mm -hmm. uh, around 10 o'clock in the evening. About 3.30 in the morning, and my doorbell rang, and it was a reporter saying, you better get down to the courthouse, something's going wrong. Mm -hmm. So I get down to the courthouse, and um, uh, Emily went with me, and we found that uh, this says rather than being a 500 vote winner, I was a 500 vote loser. Mm -hmm. How'd that happen? Nobody really knows. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really knows uh, exactly what happened. They told me that somebody forgot to carry a one mm -hmm. uh, in doing some additions or something. I, I don't remember what it was. Uh, nobody would really explain what really happened. Uh, but uh, that next morning, mm -hmm. when I went into my bathroom, uh, I, uh, I wept softly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, the next afternoon, I went up to New York to uh, chill out with a friend. And uh, the next morning, his phone rang. Uh, and it was John West on the phone. Mm. And so he came to me and says, uh, man, says, uh, John West on the phone. I mean, he, he was almost trembling. Uh -huh. He didn't even <laughs> believe that. So I went to the phone and John West told me that uh, he went to talk to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and asked would I stop through Columbia on my way back uh, to Charleston. And so I flew back into Columbia a couple of days later uh, and we met. He told me he wanted me to come work for him. And I declined. I told him I don't think I could do that. Um, I thought that my politics was a little more uh, activist than he would be willing to, to tolerate. He looked at me and he said to me, and I'll never forget this, he says, Jim Clyburn, he says, if I were black uh, with as much on the ball that you have, I'd be much more militant than you are. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit embarrassed by uh, that, you know. Um, but I got a, my second lesson, in, in big lesson in politics that day. Uh, when I stepped out of his door, um, his press person told me, that, uh, you got a phone call. Mm -hmm. I said, a phone call? Who knows that I'm here? I figured nobody knew I was there, but Emily, and she would be waiting on me to call her. But then I thought maybe she was calling. I went to the phone, and it was a newspaper reporter mm -hmm. who says, well, uh -huh. uh, are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. Well, great lesson in politics. Uh, while I'm saying no to the governor, uh, this guy gets up, Phil Gross, who's a great friend of mine now, he goes out, calls the reporter. and. Uh, uh, gave me a real lesson in politics. Mm -hmm. And then she said to me, she said, well, you cannot say no to the governor. Mm -hmm. Well, that was headline the next day I was going to work for the governor. All right. Yeah. And he was asked about that. I'll never forget. Uh, because a lot of people saw me as being a little, a little more militant uh, than, the, than they thought South Carolina would tolerate. And a reporter, uh, I think his name was Hugh Gibson, I'll never forget, asked John West, about his appointment of me. Mm -hmm. And John West's reply was, we do not leave our wounded on the battlefield. Mm. Uh, I was the only Democrat that had lost in, the, in Charleston that year. Mm. Yeah. And so you maintained a relationship with West until he died? Oh, Lord, yeah, uh, absolutely. Very close relationship. Um, uh, we uh, visited uh, often. Um, on the phone, in person. Um, uh, Emily and I spent Christmas on Hilton Head every year, and John West moved down there after the, the governorship, and so during the Christmas holidays, uh, we would visit with him and Lois. Uh, but during the year, we'd be on the phone all the time. We'd have lunch together occasionally. Uh, Any time I, uh, uh, I needed showing up, I would get a little note from him or a phone call from him. Uh, never forget when I got ready to run for Congress, we, uh, we had lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, and he told me he thought I really ought to do it. Um, and uh, just before making the announcement, uh, my youngest brother uh, had um, uh, some public difficulties that um, 
uh, called into question. Um, in my mind, uh, John West called me early the next morning and uh, started talking to me about the race. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I said, well, Governor, I'm not too sure uh, I'm going to do this now. I said, you know, uh, the headlines that are out there now, um, I'm not too sure I need to do this, he said to me. He said, you know, uh, he always called me Jim Clyburn as if it were one word. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, Jim Clyburn says, um, life would be so simple if we did not have siblings and children. Uh -huh. uh, he says, uh, uh, when are you going to announce? Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. 